Well, hello, fellow pilots. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. Welcome to the exciting world of flying brought to you by Microsoft Flight Simulator 2002. You'll use the same skills we've been teaching pilots throughout the world. In fact, many pilots use Microsoft Flight Simulator to help with their training and to keep proficient. And even more people use Microsoft Flight Simulator just to have fun flying. Today we're going to start that fun by getting you ready for your first virtual flight in a brand new Cessna 172 SP. So join us as we share some cool tips that'll help you have lots of fun with Flight Simulator. Just click the next button on the lower right side of the screen. You know, I am all fixed up with a great joystick. It's a Microsoft Sidewinder Force Feedback Pro 2. I love flying with a joystick because it makes the controls of Flight Simulator operate like an airplane's control. And it really makes flying Flight Simulator a lot of fun. By the way, not all joysticks are identical, but they all operate about the same way. Notice how when John wants to increase the power, he pushes the lever on the joystick forward, and to decrease the power, he pulls back on the lever. Now the throttle on your joystick may operate differently, or you may not even have one at all. In that case, you can press the F2 and F3 keys to control the throttle. And it kind of makes sense that the bigger number increases power, and the smaller number decreases power. Now, I'm using the position of the joystick to tilt or bank the wings. For instance, when I move the joystick to the right, it makes the wings bank to the right. And when John has the bank angle he wants, he can just move the stick back to the center position. And the airplane will stay in a bank. Notice, any time the wings are not level, the airplane will turn. When John wants to level the wings, he moves the stick to the left and he centers it again when the wings are level. Since the wings are level, the airplane will stop turning. You also use the stick to make the nose go up or down. Ease back on the stick and the nose will go up. And if you're going fast enough, the airplane will climb. Ease the stick forward and the nose will go down and the airplane will descend. It always surprises people to learn that the secret of flying either an airplane or a flight simulator well is to make little teeny tiny movements of the control. In fact, if you see the stick move very much at all, you're probably moving it too much. On the other hand, one of the really fun things about flight simulator is if you want to move the stick a lot, <laughs> you can make the airplane do some pretty interesting things. As you can see, to fly realistically, you want to make very small movements of the controls. Now, take a look at the key commands on the screen below. Then, click on the Next button to learn a neat secret about using the flight instruments to control your airplane. You know, to get the most fun from Flight Simulator, you'll want a joystick. But you can still have lots of fun flying with the keyboard controls. First of all, to control the throttle, you press the F2 and F3 keys. Notice how when John wants to increase the power, he presses the F3 key. And to decrease the power, he presses the F2 key. It kind of makes sense that the bigger number increases power and the smaller number decreases power. And if you don't have a joystick, the numeric keypad gives you another way to control the airplane itself. Before you use the keypad, make sure NumLock is off. Now to use the keypad, just imagine an airplane on top of the keypad and think of tapping on the part of the airplane you want to move down. For instance, I want to push the right wing down for a turn to the right, so I'll tap on the 6 key. When John has tilted the wings to the bank angle he wants, he presses the 5 key to center the controls, and the airplane will stay in a bank. Notice, any time the wings are not level, 
the airplane will turn. To bring the left wing down, John taps on the four key. When the wings are level, the turn stops, and John presses the five key to center the controls. Tap on the eight key, and the nose will go down, and the airplane will descend. Tap on the two key, and the tail will go down, and the airplane will climb. The trick to controlling the airplane with the number pad is to not hold the keys down for very long. You know, the longer you hold a key down, the more the airplane will move. Now, on the other hand, one of the fun things about Flight Simulator is you don't have to hold the keys down for very long <laughs> to make the airplane do some pretty exciting things. As you can see, to fly realistically, small control inputs are the name of the game. Now, Take a look at the key commands on the screen below. Then click on the next button to learn a neat secret about using the flight instruments to control your airplane. There are lots of instruments to look at on the panel, but just six of them are known as the primary instruments. Even though they don't always look exactly the same, you'll find these six instruments in almost every airplane. Now, we're going to let you in on a little secret. You only have to look at two of these instruments to get most of the information you need to have basic control of the airplane. Now, the first of these two instruments is officially called the attitude indicator, but old timers call it the artificial horizon. It's an instrument that gives you the information you'd get by looking at the actual horizon outside the window. And it gives you that information even when you can't see outside due to weather or darkness. While John is flying the plane, the white horizon bar stays parallel to the natural horizon. And the little orange airplane moves with the real airplane, showing him whether the nose is up or down, or if the airplane is in a bank. To keep the airplane at the same altitude, all John has to do is put this dot, representing the nose of the airplane, right on the horizon bar. To keep the wings level, he'll keep the little orange airplane level with the horizon bar. Now, if you want to make a nice gentle turn, say to the right, keep the nose dot right on the horizon bar and roll until the right wing on the little orange airplane covers up the first bank reference line. To climb straight ahead, just go to full power and then use the attitude indicator to keep the wings level and pitch up to put the dot on the little orange airplane on the second tick mark above the horizon bar. That'll give you a great climb attitude. Now here is something that may surprise you. To descend, you just keep that level flight attitude and reduce the power to the bottom of the green arc on the tachometer. That way the airplane will make a nice controlled descent. Now you can increase your descent rate by holding the same attitude and putting down flaps by pressing the F7 key. Flaps come down at the back of the wings to increase lift and drag and you can learn more about flaps by clicking on learn to fly. One last thing by the way about using the attitude indicator. You'll get the best results if you make very small corrections. If you get a little high or low, you can correct by pitching up or down just about the height of the little dot or less. The second of the two most useful instruments is the airspeed indicator. The airspeed indicator tells you how fast the airplane is moving through the air. The needle points to the speed, which is measured in knots. As a good rule of thumb, you want to keep your airspeed in the green part of the indicator. Now, any time the airspeed starts to get too high or low, you can just return the airplane to level flight attitude using the attitude indicator and putting the power in the center of the green arc on the tachometer. Do that and the airspeed will come back into control very nicely. You know, as you can see, together, these two instruments tell you most of what you need to know to do a pretty doggone good job of controlling the airplane. But the other four primary flight instruments are important, too, and you can learn more about them in Learn to Fly. Meanwhile, 
it's time to meet your instructor. So click the Next button on the lower right side of this screen. All right, it's time for you to take off on your first flight in Flight Simulator. You're going to have a great time. So let's meet your flight instructor who will ride along with you today. Taking you on this flight is Rod Machado. Rod holds an airline transport pilot certificate and all fixed wing flight instructor ratings. He's an accomplished pilot, a truly fun guy, and a fantastic instructor. Thank you, John and Martha. Over the years, I've taught many people to fly and have fun learning. It'll be no different in Flight Simulator 2002. Let me tell you about what we're going to do in this short introductory flight. First, we'll take off from right here at Montgomery Field in San Diego, California. I'll talk you through the takeoff where you'll accelerate down the runway, raise the nose to takeoff, and establish a stable climb. After we climb to a safe altitude, we'll level off and practice a few turns, climbs, and descents. Then I'll help you get the airplane pointed back toward Montgomery Field and I'll help you land the airplane. That's right, I said land the airplane. How will we do that? Too simple. As we get close to the airport, I'll help fly the approach and give you instructions to lower the flaps and configure the airplane for landing. Just as we get above the runway, you'll pull the throttle back and flare for landing by raising the nose of the aircraft just before touching down on the runway. Now, all that might seem a little much for this first flight, but trust me, we'll have a good flight. So buckle up, adjust that seat, and let's go fly. And because this is Flight Simulator, you can exit the flight at any time by pressing Escape. You can also take this flight again as many times as you like. And oh, one last thing. Rod has an entire course about flying for you right here in Flight Simulator. So be sure to explore the lessons by clicking the Learn to Fly button on the left when you're done flying. Are you ready to go flying? Then click the Fly Now button on the lower right side of this screen.
Okay, Captain. If you look on the lower right-hand corner of the instrument panel, you'll see the tachometer. Reduce the power by pulling the throttle back to about 2200 RPM. Look at the attitude indicator, especially the orange pointer at the top. Notice that right now it's pointing at the arrow at the top. This means we're wings level. The orange pointer points at our current bank angle. The white lines around the outside of the indicator are bank reference marks. 10, 20, 30, and 60 degrees. I'm going to make a right turn now. I'm applying gentle pressure to move the stick a little bit to the right, then return it to almost center when I have 20 degrees of bank. When I'm almost at the heading I want, I roll the wings level by moving the stick gently to the left and holding it there until the little orange pointer lines up with the white arrow.
by hitting F7 one more time. Verify the throttle is at about 1900 RPM. The runway is right where we left it. We're caught and doing fine so far. Let's do the before landing checklist, left to right. Mags are both, fuel is both, mixture is full rich, flaps are selected, 30, indicating 30. We're cleared to land on runway 28 right. Before landing checklist is complete, Captain. We're two miles from touchdown now. When we get to about 10 feet off the ground, I'll help you figure out where that is. But when we do get to about 10 feet off the ground, I'm going to need you to pull the power to idle and gently pull the nose up so the main landing gear touches down before the nose does. We're about to go underground. Set the power to about 2200 RPM. Soda and get you signed up. Meanwhile, you can take a look at the flight analysis to see what we've done. 